Something big has changed. You've probably seen some imagery from China's 100-year CCP anniversary or the 100-year anniversary of the Communist Party of China, and you might have realized that the imagery is quite alarming. You know, the CCP or the Communist Party of China has been around for about 100 years, and this time they were dead serious on having a proper celebration. But what exactly are they celebrating? I mean, we all know they made a huge deal out of this, and they were legitimately paranoid leading up to it. Look at what they did just before the celebration happened. They banned all extreme sports because of the anniversary. They wanted to have a good atmosphere. Anything that possibly could be bad was not reported on or was censored or covered up. They squashed the lying flat or the Tangping revolution, the revolution where Chinese people are kind of giving up on life. They've had a huge, huge uptick in military threats and flying jets into Taiwanese airspace. They sent astronauts to space for soft power. They claimed to have eradicated poverty. They completely squashed student protests in Zhejiang and Jiangsu provinces. They've stopped Hong Kong completely. They instituted a national security law that can arrest you for very, very ridiculous reasons in Hong Kong. They shut down all pro-democracy leaders and newspapers in Hong Kong. And they even got rid of pesky billionaires like... Jack Ma said excellent innovation isn't scared of the law, and look at what Xi Jinping did to him. What we usually see in China's celebrations is imagery promoting China as a peaceful player. You know, the Asian business partner that does its own thing and is happy to work together with investment and opportunity. The past two celebrations have been anything but that under Xi Jinping, the current dictator of China. While the Chinese government does throw millions of dollars at YouTube channels and Twitter accounts and other soft power to change your mind about it, its true ambitions are more clear in its mass displays. It's less of a, let's work together, and more of a, we know the West is in decline, so let's just not care about our peaceful image anymore, and let's look like maniacal villainous tyrants that have already won. The CCP knows that it's been losing globally for favorable public opinion. Most of the Western world has dropped significantly in its positive opinion about China. In fact, it's rarely ever been this low. However, that doesn't mean that people are not taking China seriously. While it's now painfully aware that it's not made friends and people are being increasingly negative about it, it's leaning more into a new image that it's trying to portray. That's kind of like, yeah, you hate our government, but there's nothing you can do about it. We've already won. I'll be honest with you, I see it in the comments section of my videos or my content. People talking about how bad the left is and how they're no different than the CCP. Or how awful the right is because it's no different than the CCP. This partisan nonsense that plagues people's minds and that the media constantly feeds off of from both sides is exactly what the CCP is banking on. In weakness, it can project its power, and there's nothing you can do about it. I've seen the very far left praise the CCP for its amazing social programs and lifting its people out of poverty, when in fact China barely has any social programs and actually stifles its own populace. I've seen the very far right praise China for what they've been doing in Xinjiang and how that they've fought against woke culture. China knows how to prey off of both sides, and that is weakness. Anyway, the same government that starved and murdered tens of millions of people, and yes, I said that correctly, starved and murdered tens of millions of people in modern history, like I'm talking you or your parents' lifetime, is in power today. However, it's just branded, it's past, is justified. After all, what's tens of millions of people dead if it means, you know, you can live a decent life now? I was gonna use this analogy, like, uh, the CCP kind of acts like a criminal that gets caught for murder, 
and then justifies it by handing you a hundred dollar bill and then goes on their merry way. But it's more like the CCP acts like a criminal that gets caught for murder and then justifies it by telling you to get a job at McDonald's and to shut up. The only reason that China got a semblance of wealth, and by the way, per person is very, very far from being a rich country, despite its portrayal. You might be surprised to know that both Mexico and Thailand are richer than China. Yet it portrays itself as even, even wealthier than the USA, when in fact, it's only about a fifth as wealthy as America. But that's for another video for another time. Anyway, the only reason that China got to where it is today is because the Chinese people finally were allowed to make money. It turns out Chinese people are pretty good at stuff. And when you let them work or participate in the free market, they do well. What a surprise. The Chinese government has taken ownership of all of China's successes. So if I was a Chinese person, I'd be kind of pissed off. And it's also erased its very recent and horrific past. People focus on tragic events like famine and Tiananmen Square Massacre. And we should always remember those things, but the current oppression under the guise of justified surveillance to keep everyone safe is just as bad. We don't even have to delve into the current genocide against a minority group in Xinjiang. Xi Jinping is the leader of the same party that has committed atrocity after atrocity. But the difference is, is he's torn up the roots from the inside and planted down only seeds of his own design. He's ousted every political opponent through purges, ironically labeled as anti-corruption campaigns, and even arrested and murdered his opponents. He's created a country of spies who rat each other out and has put his own men in every business, school, the internet, and walk of life so as to monitor and make sure that everything is going according to his plan. China is now at similar levels to Chairman Mao era in terms of paranoia, surveillance, and crackdowns. I always used to joke that China was heading in the direction of North Korea, and mostly I was joking, but it's become a reality. Xi Jinping's belief is in direct opposition to the China that I lived in. The idea that China will play nicely with other countries and keep a pretty hands-off approach to everything in order to grow and improve. The new approach is that the CCP must guide the economy and the private sector should be more tightly controlled. This didn't work the first time under Chairman Mao and it's not gonna work again. Party loyalty above all else, including economic growth, will completely isolate China. This aggressive control over the aspects that finally led China out of the bottom levels of poverty, like the free market, is doomed to fail. The aggressive stance that China is now taking, complete with unpalatable imagery, is bound to push countries that were previously on the fence out of China's grasp. Xi Jinping's current view of China is largely based on a disturbing obsession with the collapse of the Soviet Union. In fact, he's spoken about it many times. He's utterly puzzled as to how one of the most powerful nations of all time, a communist one at that, the Soviet Union, a nation who managed to help defeat Nazi Germany when it only had two million Soviet government members, collapsed. He stated that it was Glasnost, or the period of opening, within the Soviet Union that allowed people to criticize some aspects of the government that ultimately led to its collapse. He's truly obsessed with this idea. He's pondered it publicly, and he's made it his life's mission to make sure that this also doesn't happen in China. It's more important that the party survives than the welfare of the people in the positive growth of China's society. Instead of letting China morph or liberalize naturally through the free market, Xi Jinping's paranoia has simultaneously made him the most powerful man on earth, but at the same time, destroyed China's potential of being the next global leader. In reality, Xi Jinping and his crew only have about 10 years to sort out their impending issues. The demographic collapse is near, and despite lifting the one-child policy, people don't really want to have kids. There are millions of children that are a product of the one-child policy days, and they're now responsible for taking care of their parents and grandparents in a country with almost no welfare system, social programs, or even a safety net. This fervent nationalism that Xi Jinping has instilled into the populace it's not gonna last forever. When economic downturn hits, 
you can only blame the Western world so long before Chinese people start to question policy and turn inwards with their criticism. The justification for a brutal authoritarian dystopia will run dry if China continues to isolate itself before it's economically or militarily ready to do so. My takeaway from this 100 year anniversary celebration of the CCP is not that authoritarianism has won. No, that's what they want you to take away from this. They want you to feel hopeless and fragmented in your own country, mired by social problems and an ineffective government. No, no, no. My takeaway from this is that the Chinese leadership is deeply insecure and it needs to put on very unnerving displays of power to justify the direction it's going in. China's approach of biding its time until it's truly powerful, that's been turned on its head. And right now what you're seeing is most likely a struggle to show off as much as possible before heading into some real world issues.